tonight? Luke, where is he? Yeah, he's. Oh, that is that right here? No, never mind. No, that's good. But we have Woz in the house. Where is Woz? Yeah, that's Woz is here. Amen. <laughs> Woz. I needed somebody to preach tonight, so Luke would be the first one. But uh, what, uh, what do you know about Gideon? You heard of him? No, not, nothing about Gideon. Okay. Who never heard of Gideon before? So ever, I can pick anyone now, right? Yeah. Every, all right? Miss Karen, tell us what you know about Gideon. You got it, Miss Karen. Gideon? You got it. <laughs> yeah? God you gave him 300 free? men. No, just tell us what you know about Gideon. Anything you know, anything. He was no, a weakling. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Gideon was a weakling. When God called him, he didn't think he was strong enough. But he had a lot of men, and God told him he only needed 300 to win the battle because he is the first. So you, you all know about Gideon, right? <laughs> so finish past between those your three. <laughs> Tell us. Everything she says, and you want to add and take away. We want the complete story. Oh, I'm not giving it. Okay. Yeah. Well, one thing was um, he had to have some signs. So he um, asked God for a sign. Uh, he put out a, um, a sheet and said, okay, if God, if this is really for you, um, make it wet in the morning and everything else dry. And it was, and it was so. And then, but that wasn't good enough. He had to do it again. He had to do it a couple of times before he got the message that he was the one to go. One of the things um, God showed Gideon was how he chose his men. Was he said, "Whoever lap water like a dog," you know, those are the men to choose from, and that's how he became getting the three hundred. In the short scheme, he won the battle because uh, God succeeded and everyone knew it was God that won the battle because they won the battle with just 300 men when the enemy had thousands. <laughs> what do you want to hear? I think when I think of Gideon, I think of his faith and that he was like, he trusted God to do whatever he said. Like, sure, like that's the main part that I know about Gideon, is the, the men and the battle, and that he fought the battle the way God told him to, not the way he wanted to, not the way he thought was going to win. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> All right. Dwight, do you want to take Luke's place, tell us everything else? We want the story, complete story. Right. Oh, uh, I'm just going to say the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> okay. Um, so an angel came to Gideon and said, Thou man of valor, you know, the Lord has, you know, chosen you to, to deliver the, you know what I'm saying, the children of Israel. And, um, and then, of course, he did put out the fleece test, you know, to, to God. And, and then... Um, the uh, and then of course you know he'll choose the men from the you know what I'm saying from the from the lapping of the dogs, 300, and uh, and I do remember that they split into two companies I think if I remember correctly and they they like made like a loud they they played some instruments or loud noise or something they to make it sound like there was more people or whatever and um, I I, for, I forgot exactly how they did that but. Is the story fully complete? Do you want to, you have something else to add? Okay. All right. Well, the 300 sang praises unto the Lord, and then the thousands turned against each other and killed, killed one another. That's a full story. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Todd, can you go up front and tell us the story then? Scratch. 
Go for it. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, you know, one of the things we had a Bible study in Japan one time about about that very thing, and that the God, the people that God chose. Uh, were the ones that, you know, they were able to bring the water and drink and be able to watch and pray at the same time, take care of the flesh and see what's going on, you know, whereas you're down here and you can't, you're just taking care of the flesh. And some people are of the flesh and that was the test. He wanted to story. I mean, that's what I was getting out of the story. Yeah, that, that was the main point that really stood out to me right there. <laughs> All right, uh, last person. God gave specific instructions to the 300 that Gideon did have. When they went into battle, they were uh, on a hillside, and there, God gave specific instruction on how to have lights or lanterns appear to the enemy like Gideon's men and Gideon's army was numbered in thousands. The enemy was deceived, but that was all according to God's instruction. Right now, except a pastor, I'd like someone to know the story from the beginning to the end to raise your hand and explain the story to us. Then I'll have to pick a pastor. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, here goes. Uh, so the uh, strangers occupied the land and oppressed the Israelites, and Gideon was hiding. Uh, some grain from the enemy, and and uh, it was at this time that an angel appeared to him and hailed him as a mighty man of valor. And of course, uh, um, Gideon, I think, thought he was talking to the guy behind him. But uh, anyway, he revealed to him that he was going to use him as to be a savior to Israel. And he doubted him, and he and he. Uh, so he, he asked for a sign, and of course, one night it was dry on the ground and wet on the fleece. And then another, then he, he said, well, then this night let it be dry on the fleece but wet on the ground. And so that came to pass, maybe not necessarily in that order. Uh, so then after that, he, um, he accepted it, but he still had doubts. And uh, so then... Uh, he gathered, he gathered his men up and, uh, and everything. And he ended up having over 30,000 30, men. And uh, he went forth and uh, they, the, God spoke to him and said that he had too many men. So he uh, spoke to his men and said, everyone that's afraid, go home. So he was left with 10, about 10,000 men at that time. And... Uh, so then uh, the angel spoke to him again, or the voice of the Lord spoke to him again, and said, you, you still got too many men. He said, if, he says, uh, lest the, the children of Israel vaunt themselves and say that it was their forces that did it, you know, he said, uh, therefore, take them down by the water and make them to drink. And, and, he, and then after he did so, he said, now everyone that, that laps like a dog, they shall go with you. And it turned out there was only about 300. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, he, uh, he had a dream and the angel spoke to him and said, if, if, uh, if you're still afraid, he said, uh, go down to the enemy's camp and you will hear them say, you know, uh, who can stand before the sword of Gideon and, and, uh, something of, of, to that, to that effect. And, uh. So he did, and then uh, he took courage from that, and it was like, okay, this, this is for real. So, uh, so he ended up following the instructions of the Lord again that was uh, to take the pitchers and hide lamps in them and to uh, go up near the enemy, and then they were to uh, blow trumpets, and they were to break the pitchers, which would create a noise, I guess, and, um, and then the lamps, they would suddenly see the lamps and uh, the light, and, uh, and uh, then it was uh, after that that, um, you know, the enemy, they just fought among themselves and pretty much destroyed themselves, and Gideon didn't have to really do much of anything. It was, it was God that, he, he understood that it was God that, that did it, and uh, 
Another thing you know, I, I need to circle back and, and you know, at the time when um, uh, when the angel spoke to him, you know, his, his father had an idol and, um, and, and Gideon broke it down. And um, the people of the village of, of the city, they, they said, well, your dad's going to be angry. And uh, so they, they approached his father and his, his father had said, uh, he said, hey, you know, the Lord told him to do that, uh, you know, ver very well. So he said, if, 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 uh, if that is a God, let him stand up for himself. Um, but the, the image that he broke down. And uh, I think I covered everything that's essential. I might have missed a detail, but that was... there you go. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So this is the full story, but I would advise you to go and read that story. It's in George 7, George 7 and 6 and 7, 7, 7. So it will be good for you. And there are so many points, so many lessons we can learn from, from this. So it's just the same story. I'm just taking a few, few minutes to go over the point. Israel, the Israelites were being tortured, have really bad time. The, Mid, the Midian, Midianite, for seven years, they came and they stole everything that they have. They, they work, but for, for the Mid, Mid, Midianite, it was really tough. And finally, God sent an angel to, uh, you know, to tell, no, the people cry, the people cry unto the Lord, and the Lord sent a, a prophet to say, hey, it's because of your sin. It's because of your sin. But God rose up Gideon. Among them, he found Gideon, but he went to Gideon. Gideon was actually hiding his, his stuff, so they didn't take it. And then uh, the angel came to Gideon and said, hey, oh, my, mighty man, and Gideon said, <laughs> if if, we, if I was that, that mighty, I would save the people. And actually, what about uh, our fathers used to tell us about God, what he did in Egypt and what he did in the wilderness and that, uh, where is he now? And then the angel said, go ahead you and save the pe 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 people. Gideon thought this was a joke. He didn't say, I'm the poorest, and I come from a poor, my family is poor. Like, he didn't see himself in, in, that, in that. But God, God chose him. Why? We don't know. But Gideon wasn't a man like David. David, when God says something, he goes for it. But Gideon said, well, if that's the case, Lord, just show me. So he got his fleece and he says, okay, let it be due on the fleece, not on the ground. And he, the second time he said, well, yeah, sorry, Lord, I have to, I need more proof. But God proved him twice. See, it's me, I'm sending you and go. So definitely when he saw that, he said, okay, now I need an army. So he blew his trumpet, calling everybody to come and say, hey, I needed an army. And 32,000 people come. You would think that's a great army. No, it wasn't compared to the enemy. <laughs> it was so much that it even, they didn't even put the number. And they said their, their camel were just just 32,000 men wasn't anything. But the Lord says, well, Gideon, you have too many people. Because if I let you win with 30,000 men, right? Israel is going to say it's me. You know God doesn't want anybody to get his glory. That's why we save by grace. That no one will boast. He said, no, no, I'm not going to, to let that, that, that happen. Now what I'm asking you to do, go to the people, tell every man 
who is afraid, scared, and miss home, or for whatever reason, go home. How many you think left? 22,000. Now, 32,000 wasn't enough. Now he is left with 10,000. <laughs> and probably Gideon said, well, Lord, I mean, what will I do with 10,000? But the Lord said, well, actually, there are too many. Go to the river, to some place, I'll tell you who will go. And that's when he picked 300. He says, with these 300, I will save Israel, and they will know it's me who did it. Now, we said Abraham, uh, Gideon wasn't as a brave man like Dave, 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 David. You think he was scared? I mean, just because you have faith, don't tell me you're not scared and when things come. But you know what I like about God? He knows that. He knows that. So he came to Gideon by night. He said, Gideon, get up. Go to the enemy's camp. If you are afraid, he's talking about the man who is leading the army. <laughs> says, if you are afraid, take somebody with you. And we knew he was afraid because he did take somebody with him. So he took that person with him and, and approaching, and he heard one soldier telling a dream he had. And then the, another soldier said, oh my goodness, you know the meaning of this? That means Gideon is going to destroy us. And they were afraid. So the Bible says Gideon gets strengthened. You get encouraged. So you see, the Lord knew his state. God wanted to give him a boost. And then obviously when he came back, now he was like Pastor Wow, he was pumped. <laughs> These guys was pumped and he says, come on, let's go, let's do it. Let's do it. But you know something very interesting? Let's get into the points now. God told him, right? And God proved that two times he asked for profit, and he still didn't get it. And he had to go to the other camp to get encouragement. So it's when he, see, he heard that, that's when, you know, some, sometimes the word is not enough, what your pastor preaches is not enough, or whatever. You have to go somewhere else, or somebody else to get it. And the Lord is right there. This morning I heard someone talk about, about the grass being greener from the other side. He's talking about people leaving one church to go to another church, so they think it's greener there and then he said something very interesting what okay <laughs> he said something very interesting he said uh, remember wherever the grass is green under the grass that's where the uh, the sewage 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 that's where it is <laughs> that's why it's green <laughs> so, so. So it's amazing, God told him, and then God proved him, and he still did not believe. So it's come out good. I want you to think with me about four types of soul, soul, soldiers, or at least pe people we saw in that story. The first group didn't even answer to the call at all. Then the trumpet sound, say we in den, den, danger. The Midianites are hurting every one of us. Let's come together. Let's fight against them. Let's kick them out. 32,000. Come. That's the first group. It didn't come at all. That's group. 
The second group is the 32,000 who came. But you know, even with 32,000, you still don't have 32,000. You know that, right? Because if you come to fight, and then now they say, okay, whoever is afraid, go home. <laughs> Two thirds went home. So numbers really don't, should not scare us, right? And you know the Lord will save, the Bible says, by, it doesn't save by numbers. The battle is his, he does whatever he, he wants. So the second group, so the second group is the group that is scared and afraid and there. So when you see you have a team in a church or ministry, whatever you have, don't count every head like, the same, you know. Some people are just there to fill in the blank, but the minute something happened, I'm out, you know. <laughs> I'm out. Cannot count on that. And you have it, the third group. Uh, they are the group, they are faith, faithful, the 10,000. They say, yeah, we came to fight and we're going to fight. And now, how would you feel like you see two thirds go and then say, well, well, I may as well just go too, right? But no, they say, no, we're staying. That's, that's a, a, a faithful group. And then you have the, the, first, the fourth group. That's what we call the core, the dedicated one. They don't care about anything. 300, that's fine. Okay, you know, Todd started to explain, and I, you know, I grew up hearing that uh, those who lap like dog, they are very careful and they're watchful, or the other ones who just drop on their knees, they just don't care, just going. That's good, I understand that. But are we saying God was looking for the elite core, like the best soldiers to go and fight? Is that what he was looking for? Well, remember he said he doesn't want anybody to think they win because they're good. So being watchful, being whatever, didn't have anything to do with that. No, it didn't. First of all, you, somebody just share, I think Herb, they didn't, even, they didn't even fight. They didn't even carry a weapon. See what I'm saying? The battle is the Lord. And he knows how to win. I don't know the criteria or whatever, but I know one thing. Man, we look in the outside, right? But God look in the heart. So God knows me. He knows you. And he can save by small numbers. And he says, the Bible says that uh, the Lord will choose the things in the, what it says, uh, can you help me quote this? The, to confound the wise. I remember last time we talked about if a man, you know, want to be a, a vessel of, of, of honor to purge himself or It's something deep inside. I mean, God just know it. I don't know how to describe it. It's like it has to come from you to say, Lord, you know, I want to serve you. You die for me, and my life is, is yours. It's not about me. It's not, when, it's not like come and share a test, testimony or whatever. It's like you really dedicate yourself and from the heart. And you say, Lord, use me as you wish. As you wish. 
And as, as you see, uh, it wasn't rebellion, Gideon asking for proof, for sign or whatever. He wanted to make sure it was God sending him. And wherever, however he is willing to go, he just wants to make sure it's not somebody else pushing him, but he's doing it because the Lord said so. It's the same thing. When you dedicate yourself to God's ser service, make sure it's not a church, a pastor, a ministry, or whatever. Make sure it is the Lord. And then you will see he knows things you don't know. Gideon did not know if he was a mighty man. He didn't know that. But the Lord knows. That's all God is looking for. He's looking for someone. He's looking for a few to say, Lord, here am I, send me from the heart. And the Lord said, that's all I need. I love the story of, of Mary, 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 Mary when the angel came and asked, you know, told her the story that she was going to, to have a son. And she said, well, how can this be? And then the angel explained, well, I don't think Mary truly understood, but Mary said, you know what, I am the Lord's servant. Let him do whatever he, he, he wish. My uh, goal to, to, tonight was to share this story with, with you, hoping, hoping you go in back and read it and find your own point and see you in the story. And see you in the 300. Because the, the 22, 2000, they're still good, good people, God's people, God love them. But God wants to do something spectacular, and he needs a small group. Thinking about the story, I remember when I went to, to Haiti for, for ministry in 95, I had a group of teenagers. I don't know if they would be teenagers, but they're less than 20, okay? And then they came to me, about a dozen of them came to me, and they said they want to dedicate their lives for 10 years. Body, spirit. No girlfriend, no boyfriend, they want to. I was shocked. You know, I know in our ministry, we are used to have eunuch ship, whatever, I never, not approved, but I, I was hesitant in that. So when they come to me, I say, well, I say, you know what? <laughs> I hope you don't come to me like I'm going to approve you. Make that dedication, this thing, uh, to God, not to me. I, I, I'm not going to want to sign for it. If you make, you come together, you say that's what you want to do, do it with God. I tell you what, those young kids, they they dedicated their lives. This ministry flourished just like that. They would be in every mountain. They would they go to where Rod wants to go, and I he, he never could go. There have been places that I don't want to go, and I'm too old to even think about go, going. I mean, they evangelized, and within a few years, we spread the gospel in Haiti. Wouldn't it be great to have people, even today, to say, you know what? It's not to come to say, well, I don't have anything left anymore, so whatever is the, the, the remaining, I want to give it to God. No, whatever you have, God wants it, and he wants it now. He just... Just say, Lord, take it. Put me to use. I don't care what I do, but I want to be useful for your gospel. 
And I guarantee you, the Lord will put you to use. You will find things to do. You come here tonight, you probably come just to get a message, to get something good. And if it wasn't interesting, you won't come back next Wednesday. But if you give yourself to Christ, remember, I told you before you would come, what can I bring? And it will be a totally different mindset. And when you outside at work or wherever you are, you will find someone to talk about Christ. You don't need the church to have a program, a plan, or to push you. It will come out from inside. You just cannot hold it. You will read, you will study, and you will pray, Lord, say, Lord, please let me find someone today to talk about you. You know, that, that's just how it will be automatically. But the minute, if it's the church, the pastors, and put in program and plan, it's not going to work. It has to be you dedicate your life to Christ from inside. And then we won't have to push anyone. Your choice between you and, and, and Christ. But when you come to the man of God, say, hey, I want to be used if, if there is any area, and that's with all my heart, I want to serve the, the, the Lord, we would have another ministry. The numbers, I know they're going down here. You know, all I'm looking for personally is the, the remnant. That's what God used. That's what he used. Wouldn't you, be, wouldn't you want to be one of them? Amen. That's the elite team. And God used them all. Because he is the one to give him power. He's the one to encourage him when they, and he used their weaknesses to confound the, the strong. This is the word of encouragement that I bring forward to, to, tonight, hoping you will go and read that story and find any point, let it be applied in your life. God bless you. Amen.